uh, let's take a look at what happens if you take this kind of core fragment and you start breaking through into specific jazz chord progressions. Some of this really comes down to finding a, a hierarchy, a way of processing this information. Um, because you can look at, say, a 251, and you can think Dorian minor, Mixolydian, Ionian. You've all, uh, if, if you've studied jazz, you've seen a 2 5 and C written out where you have scales associated with each chord. So. And I know when I was growing up, I practiced those a lot. And I felt, uh, honestly, probably for about 10 years. <laughs> practicing those that I should have been getting better. I felt like something was missing. And yeah, something was missing. Um, I mean, teachers have told me, well, they're all part of the C major scale. You know, they all come back to one central scale. But I still tended to look at chords and change my whole frame of thought, depending on what chord I saw. So I would look at, say, a, a G7. And I'd immediately think, oh, right, I know my scales with that. I'm going to play either a mixolydian, or maybe I'll play a bop scale starting on the third, going down. You know, all these different tricks. And so that G7 would come up, and I changed my reference, uh, my frame of reference. And then, you know, it got really tricky, because I'd look at, like, the end of Sweet Georgia Brown, and I'd be playing... Go you know, running through all these little scale fragments, and then I'd listen to some other pro, some old guy solo on Sweet Georgia Brown, and he'd end a solo like... <laughs> and that's all he could play. I thought, well, that's so basic. How does he make this sound so easy? And that's a, one of the challenges uh, that a lot of people have. They say, why does jazz sound so easy, but it's so hard to work through? And in the end, we really believe it's because people are given too many scales. And you don't really need that many scales at all to play jazz. Um, so we're going to take a look at the basic fragment that we're dealing with here. We're going to see what happens when we start adding just a couple other chords in the mix. So the first one is going to be this chord progression. Minor 1, going to minor 4. And then back to minor 1. Sometimes, like uh, maybe on a minor blues, it might be four bars of that initial chord and then move into the minor four. But it's, it's certainly a very, very common jazz sound. So it's a nice one to take a look at. Sometimes, when if, if we've really done a whole lot of chord scale practice, we'll look at a C minor seven and we'll think immediately, right, Dorian, because on minor sevens I play a Dorian. And then I'll switch to an F Dorian the next scale. And really, I think it's important to hang on to a, a parent scale more than anything on any chord progression. And we're going to look a lot at how you can effectively teach uh, hanging on to parent scales. But in this first example, let's play it, um, and then we'll talk about it. Just the first one. One, two, one, two, ready, go. six entirely, whether it's flatted or natural. So now we're getting a chance to put in six. And that's really all we need um, to create the necessarily, uh, necessary melodic color that's going to match this chord progression. If we look at the next example, that note's going to change. And let's hear it. Uh, one, two, one, two, three, four. This is 
really, when I hear this chord progression, I think Oye Como Va. That's because lower fragments in minor rarely have to be altered. It's always the upper fragment of minor that has to be altered. And now we know this theoretically when we start thinking about our different minor scale options. You know, melodic minor ascending, Dorian minor. We're, we're always playing with the six and seven, and so we think about that when we practice scales. But very often, uh, when we go to solo, we're trained to look at a C minor 7 and think, all oh, right, well, that means this particular mode or something. And the whole idea, just in these two examples, is you have to start looking at context. So immediately, if the student does the same thing, he's going to know. As a safety, I can go back to that initial pentatonic, and then when the chord changes, I just have to get a sense. Am I either changing to a flat 6? because the more advanced that you get in jazz, the more chromatic options you have. Uh, we're not going to be looking at that today. That's sort of like a, you know, a level four student. and uh, That's like an audition-only ensemble, I guess, that we would have. But most of our programs are open to anyone. So they're coming off the street and they're saying, hey, I've played for 30 years. I feel like, like I'm in a rut. I'm playing the same things. Help me get out of it. And that rut usually has to do with plug and play. So if they've seen that chord and their whole lives they've just known, right, when I hit a G7, I'm going to play a B on there. And then they wonder why, whenever I hit a G7, do I sound so corny? And <laughs> that, what I just played, by the way, was a, a lower fragment for each chord. So I went, starting on the G7, this is the G7, I went G, A, B, D, and then back down. So. And then the chord changed, and so I changed also. I went right to the next lower fragment, and I went, and that was, that was, of course, that one. But you never hear a soloist on a recording go, you know, even Coltrane, you know, on something like this giant stuff, so, you know, he's, yeah, sure, he's going up like one, three, five, seven. He's got all these kind of digital patterns that work, thinking one, two, three, five. But he's doing it in a, such a creative way that it's just kind of a bad example of that. I think that's, um, if you want to know how to play digital patterns like a genius, you listen to Coltrane on his Giant Step solo. But for the rest of us mortals, you know, we play digital <laughs> patterns. <laughs> And we start feeling uh, like, uh, oh boy, I'm, I'm just sort of not, I'm, I'm in a box and I don't know how to break out. I, I have no idea how to make this creative. Um, a couple things I want you to uh, notice with this progression is if you look uh, at the first version in bar four, I'm hitting a G over that F minor. Now, Your ear knows it's right, but your brain isn't so sure because your brain is the student, you know, when you're first processing, you, you're learning uh, match chord tones. So you change to F minor and what, what you're learning is, uh, right, I need to all of a sudden change to F and A flat. But uh, if you're thinking instead, I have a parent scale to guide me, then that G still becomes king. That I mean, melody always trumps harmony, by the way. That's something that is across the board, uh, whether you're dealing with classical composition, whether you're dealing with jazz improvisation, um, I'm, I'm saying that very definitively, but I really, really firmly believe this. Uh.